Happy Valley on Wednesday night for nine races uh, on the programme and it is the final of the DBS Manny Life Million Challenge as well. A very warm welcome to Racing to Win. I'm Andrew Lejeune, joining the studio by former analyst Paul Lally and race caller Tom Wood as well. Tom, and off the back of a big weekend, big card at Happy Valley. Yeah, nine races and it's a very good card at Happy Valley on the Wednesday night as well. Not often we have the Class 1 race at Happy Valley, but we've got two. They are races 5 and 7, one of them over the 1,650 metres, the other over the 1,200 metres with the Amazing Star, who's looked very good in his last three runs. He's won by 11 and 3 quarter lengths in his last few runs, so he's looking to add to that tally. Mm, country star back at his uh, favourite track as well. A couple of stars there, Paul. What have we got jackpot-wise? Nothing. No, there's no jackpot at all. Uh, jackpots at all coming up for this race meeting. But uh, look, there's some really good betting opportunities. Again, as you mentioned, uh, Amazing Star keeps going up the handicap. Can he keep winning? There's no reason why he can't, looking at the way he's been winning those races. Country mm. Star was good at Chartin mm. last night. Yeah, he's basically gone 3 2 and 1, or 4 3 2 1 in one in one race in each, each yeah. grade, hasn't he? He's yeah, been extraordinary. He's, yeah, he's been very good, and uh, Zach Purton stays with him. He's going to have some opposition from the likes of Fat Turtle, who uh, is a bit of a course and distance specialist, and I thought he trialled well the other day. He did. All right, that's uh, later on on the programme. Before we get into Happy Valley, though, let's look back on the weekend action at Chartin with our racing review. It was the second leg of the four-year-old series, the Hong Kong Classic Cup, up to the 1,800 metres here. Golden 60 and more than this, the stave mates fought out favouritism as they swung into the straight. Vincent Ho on Golden 6, he just needed a gap. Yeah, he did. He was looking for it uh, here and now the opportunity presented to the inside of his stable mate uh, more than this. It was very patient, cool, calm and collected ride from Vincent Ho. Champions Way had found the front at this point. More than this, he had taken off at about the 700 metres and Zach Purton enjoying staying on. There'd been a few queries with him about uh, the temperature and fever he had in the, the days leading up to the, uh, the Classic Cup, Paul, but uh, he was brilliant again. Yeah, and the distance was always a query too, but absolutely no problems there mm. and you can see him getting 2,000 metres uh, easy enough here at Chartin, so it's all onwards and upwards for him, and more than this, wouldn't have lost too many admirers either. No, Champions Way was well backed, he ran well. The disappointment, I suppose, out of the race would be Beauty Legacy. Mm. Yeah, he was quite keen in the run, Joe said, he just wouldn't uh, relax at all, and if he doesn't relax come BMW Hong Kong Derby Day, he'd really struggle, I think, at 2,000 metres. Yeah, that's his issue, isn't it? He, they tried to ride him in a slightly different... I think he was ridden a bit more forward when he was overseas. They're trying to get him to settle, but it hasn't seemed to work, that experiment. Good, good run by the fourth horse, enjoying that yeah. he hit the line well. I thought him up to the trip of 1,800 metres, we've seen the, the best of him now, I think. Uh, we're about to see the best of him, and uh, stepping up to the 2,000 metres will suit him down to the ground. That's where, really where he's had a clear run at them this time. All right, Golden 60 stays 112. Amazing beats. He has a derby entry as well. Won a thriller in the very race. Uh, next race for Paul O'Sullivan and Karis Teaton. Seattle Choice got a big whack, and All Best Friends did as well, bring up Manfred Mann's 500th winner. He won easy too, didn't he, all best friends. Uh, Casemiro got a well-deserved win as well. He'd been a bit unlucky in his uh, couple of starts, as was Yi Chong lucky. He, he um, had excuses last time. So the horses and Seattle Choice, so those horses that had excuses, they actually came out and atoned all three of them. All right, OK. They were the big winners uh, on the day. We'll see if we can find you some more, though, with our horses to follow. All right, what do you got for us, Paul? Probably a few to choose from, I thought. There was. I, I'm going to go with the horse who's gone out at massive odds in all his starts so far. He was at 58. That was the, the lowest he's been. Look at him on the inside there. He steps up to 1,400 metres here. Now, he's by Ocean Park. Uh, so once he gets further, the better. And you can see him zigzagging around, trying to get a run. He couldn't get a run there on the inside. So he was eased right out very, very wide. You can see him going sideways at this stage like a bit of a crab. But once he gets um, balanced up here, he was uh, impeded a bit. He disappears out of picture, but then he can see him appearing late. Uh, so it was a really good run, I thought, from V. Cervalia. You can see him hitting the line nicely there. Yeah, and that was Casemiro, odds on, getting his nose down right on the line. What do you find, Tom? Went with unique treasure in the middle of the day. Yeah, I thought he had a, a decent run. He might have got a fraction keen uh, racing off the back, but he was able to follow the, the rail home. He started from uh, gate number six, Derek Long and uh, Ricky Yu. He hasn't had too many starts here, has uh, unique treasure. You can see him getting off heels there of all in mind. This was the race that was won by Good Beauty, who had a, a nice passage up the inside. Starluck second, all in mind third, and unique treasure was uh, next best there for uh, Derek Long. So he wasn't beaten overly far, I think only about a, a length and a half at the line. He's had six runs to date, and this was the best of them. Yeah, really dashed late, didn't he? They're a good beauty. Um, for me, um, this horse, um, is on debut, he's a beauty. There was two horses making their debuts, in actual fact. Uh, the other one was 
Evan Almighty, who is much shorter in the market. This horse went off at nearly 150 to 1. It's another horse, though, that Lyle Hewitson's run, uh, ridden, that's run much better than his, his price would suggest. He's shown nothing, really, um, in six trials so far. We had the quickest final sectional here. You can really see him start to dig in. Uh, the other debutant in the darker jacket just in front of him there, Evan Almighty, but he's flashed home here. I think there's plenty more to come. That winner, Yi Chong Pegasus, won a two in the afternoon for, uh, for Tony Millard, but got the hang of it late. Dead. Good, glad you were <laughs> Right, there you go. Those are the horses to follow for the uh, out of the, the weekend's action. We move forward to Happy Valley on uh, Wednesday night, and we do have nine races. It's meeting 48 of the campaign. We're on the A course of the rail back in the true position. The Class 1's race 5 and race 7. Of course, this is the final meeting for the DBS Many Life Challenge as well. More on that later. Speedy Wally heads them down back in class. He's a three-time winner this grade. Enjoyed with success down in class as well. Association fans, runner-up last start over the 1650 behind Blooming Spirit. McMonagall won over this trip at uh, Chartin. Two starts back. Good third last time as well. Wicker won over this trip again at Chartin back in December. And Young Glory won here over the 2200 metres back in October. David Ferris and Lyle Hewitt's in the saddle from Barrier 4. Break record is the horse that's been up at uh, Chung for the last 30 days. Danny Shum and Matthew Pern, first try of the trip. There's a few speed options here. Association fans is one. McMunigal is the other. Um, he's been racing predominantly recently. Uh, Wicker potentially can. He did lead uh, three runs ago, did uh, Wicker. And another one is uh, Break Record, who can race handy from time to time. Gold Velvet might get uh, a little bit of a wide passage, and so too Divine Power. Nine years old now, it's a speedy Wally, but look, he's still full of beans, and he's uh, keen as mustard down the back straight. He's always been a quirky horse. But he is a five-time winner, and last time he was in Class 5, he won. You can see he's super keen down the back there. Association fans, another one. Uh, last time he stood up to 1,800 metres, he won as well. So uh, the distance looks good for him. He's another bit of an enigma, is Association fans. He can play up a lot. But he was sort of on his best behaviour, sort of, uh, there in the morning. Um, Gold Velvet, he goes nicely enough. He's got Victor Wong aboard. Chad Schofield will take over on race day, though. And another one, he's only uh, won the one start, but he was very impressed when he won that. It was a while ago now. Yeah, Victor Wong, of course, was back on the weekend, had his first couple of rides uh, for the season. So hopefully he can uh, boot a winner home in the not-too-distant future. We'll start off here with McMonagall and Gold Velvet. This is on the back of McMonagall winning at any old odds, but uh, proved here it certainly wasn't a fluke. No, it was a decent run from him. He was up on the pace again, as he was uh, two starts ago when he won. He was beaten on this occasion by Savvy Seven, who got a, a nice passage through towards the inside. Uh, I couldn't have had him when he won. I couldn't have had him this time round, but he's shown that he has found a, a little bit of form here, Paul. Yeah, but both these runs have been at Shouts, mm. though. He's only had the three cracks at um, Happy Valley, and he hasn't done much. So I'm, I'm, I've left him alone. Look nine to one at the moment. Mm. All right, a uh, few to pick out of this one. Victoria Seeker fares best. This is behind um, Sky Jam, Young Glory, Wicker Garlic here. Who's money back a place at the moment and divine power? Yeah, 2200 metres. So they're stepping right back to 1800. Uh, for this race. The, the one I am going to take out, though, is Victoria Seeker, who did uh, go nice enough. He's a bit of a stay by Sebring as Victoria Seeker, but back to 1,800 metres. He has been placed over the uh, 1,800 at Chartin. He's got barrier 11. I think he can fill a minor placing. He'll probably get back. Uh, I left him out this time round, but the Paul O'Sullivan team found some form at the weekend. Mm. Certainly did. So one more race to, uh, to look at. Association fans, break record in Little Island. Um, here behind Blooming Spirit, who'll uh, go around in a later race. Yeah, he's not been running badly, uh, association fans. Peter Ho, Matthew Chadwick, gate number two. Last win came off 33 points, so he's still a little bit higher than that at the moment on uh, 37. He tried hard on this occasion, just headed over the last 150 metres or so. You can see really swishing that tail over the final stages. He, he does that all the time, does he? Swatting flies there. But I tell you, he, last time he did run over the 1,800 metres, he did win. Yeah. All right, so there's a few pointers there, but Speedy Wall is the favourite. I've got him on top too, Speedy Wally. I think he's down in grade and he can win from Association fans, Victoria Seeker. Joyable success, the other downgrader. One, four, seven and two. Yeah, I'm with Speedy Wally as well. I think if the race had been 1,650 metres, it would have been right up his alley, but there isn't a Class 5 1,650 for him, so 1,800 is next best. He's on top to beat to four Association fans, 10 wicker, and I've thrown in McMunigal on a minor line. 1, 4, 10 and 6. There you go. We've got the same queue in that first race. I've gone 1 and 4 as well. Class 5, 1,800 metres for the opener.